Everybody and welcome to VFX and Chill with Hashi and Seth, and also Michael. I am Seth. I am Hashi. Yeah, he is. And I am Michael. Guys, that was our show. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. No, thank you for joining us this week, Hashi. That doesn't look like your house. This is not my house. I am here. It's not your in beautiful house. The lovely Hotel Figueroa in uh, downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I was here for the. Wait, wait. Exciting Did you just wait? Wait, wait, wait. You just gave them your exact location. Max. I don't know if you needed to tell them the exact room seven oh three at the <laughs> Hotel Figueroa, nine three nine South Figueroa Street, Los Angeles. Uh, come knock on the door. Say hi. Oh my God. Okay, Michael. Uh, where what are where are your exact coordinates, Michael? Latitude and longitude, please. Um, I'm at a I'm at a farm in uh, near Rolla, Missouri. Uh, Can't naturally, miss it. it's on the it's on the left. Isn't that where you always are? Uh, some farm no, somewhere? No, I'm, I'm usually on a... Uh, it's surrounded by farm in rural Kentucky, but I'm in Missouri at the moment. There's a chicken run over there. So I know one of you are at Adobe Max, and I'm going to assume it's the one not, of the, not in a barn. Right. Yeah, well, I, did. yeah. I, was, I was sadly unable to go to Max this year. I, I, I very much enjoyed the years I've been there, though. It's a good time. How's, she, how's it been? Uh, it's been lovely. The the Adobe crew know how to throw a good time. Uh, Adobe Max was exciting. There was lots of new crazy stuff showed off. The Maxon crew was there representing and doing our thing. And uh, uh, one of the most exciting events during uh, Adobe Max is uh, Sneaks, where they uh, tease out and show a handful of uh, upcoming technologies that they're ambitious about integrating into the products. And it's all very exciting stuff. That's awesome. Sneaks, it, Sneaks is great because you've got, especially live, because you've got these uh, developers and engineers and code monkeys that are used to being in their little basements <laughs> working on you know scientific papers and implementing them into programs. And then suddenly they're thrust onto a stage uh, full of... In like, the Microsoft like, Theater. Thousands of people in the Microsoft Theater uh, with an A-list celebrity on the stage chatting at them while they have to present this very alpha software <laughs> live. It's amazing. Yeah, this year's I mean, the tech, uh, guest... The tech is amazing, too, but, you know, as well. But, it's but just really, so you're there for the social dynamics. Try, try to talk publicly. Yeah, you're there for the social, the social dynamics. Ha Hashi, what have you seen? Well, Michael, you've been watching live, too. I haven't watched any of it. So oh, yeah, they had a, they had a the thing audience. that was, like, locked down and rotoscoping all in one, which is neat. Oh, really? Which yeah. I tweeted about. Yeah, it looks like they are they are doing their best to make After Effects aware of the the 3D space of whatever you're filming. Meaning, you can drop and throw stuff right into footage, and it'll know uh, what yeah, planet's supposed goes, to be on. If it knows goes it's on a, that wall behind this person, stuff. What is that like? How close is so? Okay, okay. So so sweeps. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like historic. Like Michael, you probably know more historically, but I feel like sweeps is a cool show of a lot of the possibilities that can happen. Uh, what yeah, would you say like, the they, integration rate is of exactly. things was, you've seen at sweeps over the years? That was my question. The, sne the, sneaks, the sneaks eventually happen most of the time, but it can take a while. Like Rotobrush 2 like was years? sneaked. Yeah, it was a couple years before Rotobrush 2 like fully came out in the software. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't called Rotobrush 2 in the sneaks. They were just, like, it was called Project Blah Blah Blah. Something close. It's a terrible name. Yeah, no, it was something. It was something clever. I, I remember seeing going, "Holy crap, this is going to be great when it gets here," and then it didn't, you know, arrive for 
a year or two, and I was like, oh well, and then it showed up. I was like, oh yeah. So yeah, it it should be it'll be a couple years probably before it's implemented. But some of the stuff that sneaks, you know, it can happen within a few months. That's happened before too. But that's usually more on the Photoshop Illustrator side of things. It's gonna come out mm-hmm. when I'm done with my movie, isn't it? That's when it's gonna come. Oh, out. Oh yes. Oh, it, they're gonna have a, a drag and drop uh, uh, CG <laughs> monsters that do whatever you tell them. Uh, oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll say I'll say the results that he was getting in the live demo were not great. Like, it was enough to make the crowd go ooh ah, but people who do the work and like the edges were bad, the tracks were slipping. Uh, like it wasn't great, but it was a good start, which is the whole point of sneaks. Like here's what we're working on. We're sneak giving you a sneak peek. It's obviously not ready yet, or it'd be wait. Are you somewhere. talking about Roto Two? Are you talking now? When you say edges were bad, are you talking about? The... I'm talking about the one they just they just. Yeah. Sneaked. So how are the uh, edges bad? At large, if it's like and a I lockdown? believe you can still you still see the sneaks online. But uh, for example, they had an image of a girl standing on a beach, and you know you, the sun Classic. is casting a shadow. And they showed that you could do an image selection. Uh... Oh, no. Hotel Wi-Fi. Oh, there he is. He's back. What oh. was that? Uh, they were, there were lots of interesting things about uh, layers in Photoshop being able to cast shadows intelligently onto the ground planes they're supposed to be on uh, with the same directionality as the rest of the photo, which is all being uh, machine learning interpreted. So in the end... If you've been paying attention to a lot of the things that people are doing with machine learning and image generation, it basically this Max was a really good showcase that Adobe is very is very excited and ready and has minds on incorporating a lot of the cool technologies that we have seen out there and putting them into that's, the hands of standard graphic kind of users. And that's so, actually really example, good news because I don't know if that's always been the case with After Effects specifically in terms of like hot, cool technology, hot, cool tech is happening elsewhere in other spaces in the real world. It feels like in the past, it's been kind of like, okay, we're doing our thing over here in After Effects. So that's actually very exciting to hear that like, you know, we're now seeing implementation of like something, stuff that we're we're using everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So imagine, for example, I mean, Content Aware Phil was really cool when it came out for Photoshop and it was a neat still... Uh, thing to do, and it was you didn't have a lot of control over it, but it was it was decent. Um, but now it's gotten a lot better, and you can do lots of like selection of where your sample points are. And now they are embracing things like selecting an area and then giving it an AI prompt to help guide what it fills that section in with, whether it's sampling the image or not. But it'll marry with your scene just the way Dolly works. If you wanted to uh, erase a bit of a Dolly image and replace it with something else from a text prompt. And so uh, it, the idea of integrating uh, all of these other, uh, you know, diffusion models of bringing imagery into yeah, to life just by typing in something uh, is it's quite remarkable. Uh, another thing that I think will be really cool for editors is uh, there are versions of this that have existed, but it looks like Adobe is trying to uh, integrate them very nicely, where you would take a, you know, footage of a conference presentation, for example, It'll be auto-transcribed, and so you can get a Word document out of it, and then you can edit a Word document down into the highlights from that conference, and the result is a video where you can have the video of just the highlights, and you can check a box to remove the audience noises so it's not disruptive to... uh, uh, to the flow, and you can add your own music and oh, stuff. Yeah. So, editing, editing video by editing the text was an amazing sneak. And that is on Adobe Labs. Like, you can go on Adobe's Labs right now and try that one out. So that, oh. was, that was usable now. Insanity. You could turn this That's entire like show, these, these first 11 minutes of the show, into the the most interesting three seconds. and then uh, You know, that's then, that's a lot like, uh, if you, I don't know if you've seen the podcasting software um, Descript, where it's it's a text based mm-hmm. podcast. I, I I have no doubt that Descript is some is either. Yeah, it feels involved in terms of what. Uh, oh, okay. I, I I don't know. If, I don't know for real, but uh, I mean the technology is so specifically like Descript that uh, uh, I imagine that there's some overlap. And Adobe is uh, yeah partners with everybody. You know. One of my favorite partners with everybody. Was... Partners with everybody. Oh, that's Michael's well, alarm for our next thing. segment. No, it's next segment. Spam. It's speaking what, of segments, favorite... what what oh, are spams. what are we doing here today? What is what is this? Yeah. Why am I here? Speaking of alarms, 
Hashi, you're sure, here because you signed a contract years ago that said um, you would be my friend until the end of time. And that's why you always get your friends to sign contracts when you first meet them. It was good. Aaron Rabinowitz worked it up. It, it seemed good to my lawyers, so I signed it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't read it, read through it. But, you know. You never should. Like, overall, you know, overall positives. Actually, it's in the contract. You weren't allowed to read it. Um, you just had to sign it. Now, speaking of contracts, this is nothing about contracts. Uh, today, we are – well, actually, 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 I like you to set up this next segment because I think – because your reason you brought it up for doing it this week was pretty funny. Oh, sure. So uh, so this week uh, at Adobe Max, uh, Maxon had a booth where we were doing half-hour presentations. And so every half-hour, you were getting something, a flavor of something new. And we had amazing presenters. We had Louis Tucci doing and Ian Robinson doing amazing uh, ZBrush sculpts. We had Tony Berry doing premiere work, Ellie Wade doing Redshift Cinema 4D stuff. And uh, 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 Vlad doing amazing MoGraph work in After Effects, and I ha- and me, uh, who had who definitely had had a really good plan going in. <laughs> I demoed some of the stuff that you that people have seen on the show, the the stamping script, the normalized track script, and little like workflow tips for After Effects. But it felt a little dry uh, by the time we were getting to the end there. And so on the for the last show, I decided. I really enjoy our timer challenge episodes. There's a chaotic energy to them that is wild. And so uh, for the last one, we improvised a, I put up two, uh, two gifts. If, uh, if you want, I could, I could probably show, uh, show on my screen here what the uh, idea was. Uh, uh, yesterday? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Show us. So, uh, so yesterday on the show, I gave the audience uh, at the top a choice. We were going to, in the in a in a twenty five minute setting, uh, recreate one or the other. Uh, the audience went with uh, the Terminator Two shot. Good because uh, you did that, the like, Abyss one already. Is wild. <laughs> well, I was saying it's good that they picked the Terminator one because you did the Abyss one on the show, didn't you? I did, and I counted on, on, on the Adobe Max audience, not necessarily knowing that. The audience, <laughs> which was you know, mostly comprised of the Maxon team uh, at the <laughs> beginning. But, but what was nice about the, the energy of this one is that, that we, we drew a crowd uh, because there was a big timer on screen. And, and, and if I see a timer on screen, I'm like, what's, what's going to happen when that runs out? <laughs> and so uh, we filmed uh, live there on the floor uh, Louis Tucci, who is an amazing ZBrush sculptor, uh, and yeah, just all around amazing force of nature. Uh, so uh, we try to kind of direct Louis through uh, doing a similar, you know, like walk up, best, uh, uh, you know, Terminator esque kind of thing, and then within 25 minutes, we had uh, worked it to to this using a combination of uh, Red Giant tools and uh and whatever vfx know-how we could uh manage to bring to it so a lot of fun so here is here's an example of one of the 25 minute challenges where it's reasonable like it it, it is a passable uh recreation of a you know like a historic moment in visual effects history (laughs) (laughs) recreated in in, in that, that is great for 25 minutes that's really good and and Michael, ha- having not seen the live presentation, uh, how would you pull off uh, pull off a liquid metal effect? Uh, Colorama. Colorama is a good idea. I, I didn't think of Colorama. Colorama. I how used to do it. How and I why? did Roto Brush two, and then oh, yeah, uh, to Colorama, I guess. and then once I had Roto Brush two, I used uh, the that Roto layer as a an adjustment layer with uh, chromatic displacement turned up oh, to a nice really soft that that see that's what i was so thinking good. i'm surprised you didn't say chromatic displacement michael because i expected your very first response to be a red giant tool and i was like oh chromatic displacement but i always i i've, I've been using colorama uh, a lot to do metallic things like it's, it's one of those early like tricks like you do a gradient and then bevel alpha and then colorama and you get metallic text 
I mean, it's crappy. I don't know that. I it's that, nope. it's a really that was a really good idea. The lighting in here, unfortunately, like I I had a notion that I was going to be able to to use the the lighting to do you know pull a fake uh, gradation and like. Uh, no, the chromatic displacement is such a good idea. Yeah. But it was great because it used like the actual footage and it's displacing it. And if you soften it out a lot, I mean, not a lot of detail in the face, but, you know, for 25 minutes, it was pretty cool. And also the lighting in the in the in the setup was not. There was not a lot of gradient falling on uh, on Louis's face. There's a lot of high contrast. And so so my. My tricks to try to like preserve highlights and preserve some details didn't work as well as I thought they were going to. But again, it was live and crazy and is always exciting. And I thought, speaking of live and crazy, yeah, yeah we, that we should. Yeah, that why why let the VFX and chill audience miss out on that fun chaotic energy? Let, so let's let's talk about some options. Hashi, you pull together some gifts. Like we're taking uh, suggestions in the chat, so. Throw them up there. Absolutely. So yeah, if you're in the chat, throw out yeah suggestions or shots, uh, meantime, especially iconic shots would would be helpful just so people yeah. have you know a, a muscle Keeping in memory. Mind, you can't you can't put links in the YouTube chat, so you'll have to just describe the shot. So it's going to have to definitely be iconic. We'll have to have heard of it. Um, so uh, Hashi, you pulled together some some uh, possible ideas or options. Some so possible ideas. Some Here ideas. are some inspirations to get us started. Uh, I pulled these at like one in the morning <laughs> after getting back. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, the Birdemic. So, so that yeah, the terrifying film Birdemic, uh, which I like, I can consider this like a like a level a level zero uh, challenge to to figure out in the uh, in twenty minutes. Yeah, but you have but, to actually uh, you have to this match one, this one. You need a. I think for this one you would need a sixty-second timer. You yes. And, well, I don't know. <laughs> you also sixty-second timer and and uh, yeah, what like maybe a production crate login. Not even a production crate. Like this is. And you also need a copy of Magic Bolt Looks presets from two thousand ten in order to get that look there, as well as. Uh, but don't apply to the birds. Just the footage. Just the yeah. footage. Don't apply to the birds. Hundred percent. That's rule number one. All right. So it's bird demic. I've also got Casper, which I think is a fun suggestion because uh, oh, this is one our pal Stu worked on. Um, uh, mm. Casper, which, movie I loved as a kid because I love Casper. Well, I didn't even love it because of the, the movie content. I loved it because it was an, like they shot it like an Invisible Man movie, which is like my thing, you know, with Roger Rabbit and everything. I loved the imagination of that and the idea of like performing that kind of stuff. Uh, Looking at it now as an adult, I am impressed by the compositing techniques with these characters in terms of making them translucent, but also like be very specifically keeping other parts of them non-translucent, having this like blur. There's all kinds of compositing tricks going on with these characters that I think are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a fun idea, but it also requires us to have a, a decent character, but I guess we could find something on Sketchfab. Uh, this one I've done already. I think I'll spare and let someone else do it if they want. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, and I'm a little, I, I'm a little done with Slimer as well. I've done a lot of Slimer, but if you want to see it, uh, Michael can put a link in the chat, uh, to busted film team experiment shows how I yes. created these old school looking ghostbuster ghosts. This invisible man is a fun one. How we've done this on the show. Oh, we've just talked about it. We, we talked about it on the show. Uh, yeah, this is one that I, I re realize will will likely require uh, props. <laughs> so you mean to 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 pull it off, and so so this might be a, a rough one, but uh... might be or an easy one. Oh, what? So who's that? I might take Invisible Man just for fun. Yeah, I nice. can't get these glasses to stay. I love yeah. that. You you look a little bit like uh, uh, you know, Dr. Honeydew. <laughs> I actually can vaguely see my screen in my stream deck, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to, what button I'm going to press now. Hope the stream stays live. Uh, speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, the stream, uh, some, some suggestions are in the chat. Um, someone with uh, Darby uh, Facinto would like you to do the mustache on Henry Cavill as Superman, which uh, Corridor has done. Yeah, Corridor or, did it. Uh, God, why don't we have a Corridor did it drop? We need to make one. Mike Mike Gaines wants you to do the flawless and accurate plane crash from Air Force One. 
Oh, Mikey Gaines, you coming in hot, man. Fire. Wait, which, what, what was that? The, I, it's, I, the Air, it's the Air Force One uh, plane crash, which is like, it's like golden uh, in yes. 64 quality uh, CG, which isn't actually an insult. Um, what else we Fire got? Fire to art director wants Ghostbusters marshmallow explosion. Interesting thought, because right here we have a gift that uh, Hashi suggested, which was a... Uh, <laughs> The tiny marshmallow man, which I think is a funny, is a really fun idea. Um, it's like right in between, uh, yeah, trying to do a, a full step of marshmallow shot and uh, some, yeah, it's a, a bit of interesting three D ery stuff. Although I kind of want to do a marshmallow man, like, like I kind of want to go in my backyard and shoot a plate and put the marshmallow man like up in the like on my street or something. Uh, I Ooh, might nice. do something like that too. And then you we know, have Sharknado, I don't remember, like. Jason Murphy in the chat. Do you do you have any uh, in, insight <laughs> on inside of any of the topics mentioned here? I, I'm trying not to specifically say anything. But. What do you mean? Wait, never mind. Jason can respond if he likes. Oh, okay. we got Sharknado. Sharknado, edited by our friend Vashi, uh, I believe, or Sharknado Two. This shot's cool. I don't remember this from the first ring. Is this from the first one? I don't think it is from the first one, but but I, I thought it was interesting. This is my kind of jam with the VHS distortion. This is the kind of thing I I love to do. That said, it does see, feel like more work than twenty minutes. Yeah. See, I get yeah, don't just you know apply VHS with the standard you know plugins. The, I was pleased with the body horror aspect of Zemeckis's take on the witches. The the whole movie is another story, but uh, I was I was sad that Zemeckis. I that I thought uh, at some point that maybe uh, the the it wouldn't live up to the uh, the whole, the, to the trauma original of the original nine it, what what was it like ninety one or something like that with, the first uh, witches was ninety one I thought we knew better by ninety one than to do that to our children. I don't know. I'm guessing some someone in the chat confirm when when the the first movie uh, of Road Dolls Witches came out. I'm already uh, traumatized by this still by this gif repeating over. It, it's it's amazing, and, it's, and I was excited because so we're like, oh, it's gonna be this new one's gonna be soft. It's by Zemeckis, and so I'll watch this with my kids. And then I was so happy that they were equally terrified by the reveal of the witches as I was by the original witches. So yeah, we can let's I, I we got it. We got to cycle this one off the screen, man. I'm I'm <laughs> so what do you want to do? Well, I, I might take I have a weird idea for the invisible man. I might do that and or a marshmallow man. Yeah. What about you? Excellent. Gosh, I don't even know audience. What? <laughs> I don't know what I want to do. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I'll try the witch smile. That's cool. 1990 was witches, apparently. All right. So I guess we're going to start this timer now. I'm scared. Uh, Oh, my gosh. Which one am I doing? I'm going to do Invisible Man. Wait, before I start, Invisible Man, are we talking the old school one? So it doesn't have to be. Well, I mean, like, honestly, we could be creating any shot in 20 minutes, uh, but it it would be good to show... uh, to be able to somehow refer to the shot ahead of time and afterward or something like that. Okay, I'm going to try something. All right, here we go. Let's start the timer. Okay. 20 minutes and counting. Here we go. Hashi, what are you doing? All right, I'm going to do the witch smile. So I'm going to start with jumping onto story blocks uh, and seeing if I can find uh, an appropriate uh, person to witchify. I, I'm so sorry, Uh whoever I'm choosing to do this to it's, it is nothing personal for you being a stock model. <laughs> I'm going to record a plate on my, uh, with my camera in quick time. You can't see it, but you can see me and what I'm doing. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do a couple of things. Okay. Let's see. What, what do we got? Um, this is, a, this is otherwise boring, but I feel like it offers, I uh, maybe not the tail end of it. 
Can you? Yeah, I think the tail end of this one works for me, so I'm going to go for it. Uh, we don't have a lot of a lot of bandwidth here at the hotel, so I'm going to download the <laughs> 2.7 megabyte uh, version of it to our too fast, too spooky episode and import that. Something I need from you guys, real quick. Can you see my monitor? Can you see my face? Uh, I mean, you can, you yes. can see me. You can, right? Say so, we I can see you. To, tell me if, if my neck skin pops into this. Ready? All right. Uh, can you see my neck? I. Mm, I, I I can't see your screen that well. Okay. Well, let's just say, let me know if any skin color shows up. All right, footage. All right, we've got this. And I wonder if this is keyable in uh, Primat. It, it was, it's, it's foolish to have downloaded the MP4 to try to... <laughs> Uh, to key it out, but but maybe. All right, so we got that, and I'm going to add a little bit more to the background here. Okay. Uh, we, I, I, we once again, this. keying something that shouldn't be keyable. Should not be keyable. I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to blur the mat a little bit, shrink the mat a little bit. I mean, this is, this is a luckily forgiving... Uh, whoa, I, I'm losing the eyes there, so... Got to get the eyes back. Um, what do we just do? A, just use a quick mask and uh, use the compositing options. Oops. Oh, you know what? I wonder if the uh, if uh, little checkbox for uh, oh core uh, core mat would work. Oh, uh, it's a little bit is a little bit hard. You know what? I'm short on time. I'm gonna do it the lazy way. No, wait. Just, just put it. Just use the effect mask and the compositing options. Oh yeah, we last week we learned and talked about uh, effect masks, uh, which which is a brilliant solution for this. Uh, I've uh, I've now committed to this version. <laughs> okay, Kyle so says we're, in this context, creepy missing eyes might be a feature and not a bug. That's very true. Okay, so let's say the clip ends there and starts at this moment when. She kind of amps up into it. Okay, so we'll go with that. Let me add, whoops, got some stuff up there. Uh, one of my mistakes in the live demo was spending way too long on, on the rotoing part of it. I mean, Rotobrush did handle that Louis walk through the convention center, uh, which is not, not an uncomplicated background to try to isolate a human figure from, uh, but uh, it handled it very capably. So here, we'll do this, and we'll call this uh, one the woman, and then we'll bring her into a new comp. Uh, I wonder if, you know what, in here I'm going to throw a uh, little bit of a, soften that edge even a little bit more with a mat choker. Some simplified geometry, so it's, yeah, they're nice and clean. Great. Okay. Justin, Justin Leduc is asking if there is an AI queue for After Effects yet, and Rotobrush Two, uh, which is in After Effects now, is an AI-assisted Roto tool. Uh, so there's that. But maybe. Oops. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> I've, asked, I've asked too much of it. 15 minutes and four seconds. 50, oh, gosh, maybe. I should be looking at this timer. Okay, 15 minutes. I, Seth, I, I forgot Seth, we had a timer. How's your filming going and stuff? <clears throat> it's going well. I actually don't want to show my screen just yet because... Fair enough, uh, fair I enough. I have an idea, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll do, show my screen on the next one, but this one I want to... It's all good. I'm, I've, I've got some uh, enough going on here. So I'm going to do a track mask and do face detailed features and play that through. Uh, we've isolated just uh, uh, four and a half seconds of this little clip, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I doubt that I've I've uh, put RBF on on this one, so I'm going to have to oh. do something different. I can share it with you real quick in Slack if you want it. It's in. Uh, do that. Okay. Uh, asks. You know what? You know, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Uh, that's my bad for not having it. Uh, do, do your thing. We got 
Too 14 late. minutes. Hashi Darby asks, do you find yourself using the Rotobrush tool or Mocha for these cutout situations? Uh, Rotobrush tool, almost always. Uh, unless I am tracking something like a bicycle frame where I really, I want some fidelity of like, of the lines perhaps to, to be vectors instead of uh, interpolated uh, lines or something like that. Uh, that's where I kind of uh, make the difference. So if I'm trying to roto out like a wheelbarrow, for example, something kind of like obscure, but w- would have very like clean hard lines or a car, uh, I would go with Mocha. But if I'm doing a, a human figure, always roto brush. All right. So I'm going to change my uh, mask setting to uh, none. And let's see, I don't know what I should set the rest pose as here because they're all a little up. So may, this is the subtlest I think the smile gets is right here. So I'm going to set the red pose, rest pose right here. And I'm going to extract and copy face measurements in case I need any of those. Uh, and let's see, what is in the background of but that maybe. crazy witch's thing? Uh, the background on... is just people in a party look at atmosphere. It's just a lot of people. People, like it's like a, okay. People leaning in and looking. Okay, I'm going to... Let's see. How about? Let's see. How about don't worry about the background. Just worry about the smile first. You got twelve minutes and sixteen seconds. Ah, that's fair. That's fair. We'll put in the background after it. Oh, but you know, I, yes, I, that's I, the fa- no, the face tracking's been in After Effects for a, a long time. A lot, I think, longer than five years, Kyle. I think. All right, I've, I've, I, I've, I've found my background. <laughs> <laughs> Good background. Perfect. Okay, so we'll, we'll save the two megabyte version of that from Storyblocks. Thank you, Storyblocks. And then, uh, let's see. Oh my goodness, this computer is burning <laughs> up. 11 minutes I'm, and 38 seconds. I'm asking you to do so little right now. The face tractor was introduced in After Effects CC 2015 in June of June 15th, 2015. And no one knew what to do with it at that point. Seven years ago. People are just now figuring out things to do with it, at least in my life. Well, let's see. I'm going to close Photoshop. Try to get a little bit, get a RAM back on this computer to see if I can wake it up a bit. Because for whatever reason, uh, my display has stopped updating inside of Photoshop, uh, inside of After Effects. So... Uh, Seth, is your screen showable yet? While I, uh, it's not I, yet. It's not yet. It's okay. We can both just talk, talky, talky, talk. Yeah, we'll talk. both just talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly restart After Effects and see what what the issue is. This uh, this laptop does not love to have a lot of things run at the same time, and uh, we're we're pushing it. But it's it's part of the challenge, right? Like it wouldn't be exciting if there wasn't a limitation. Like if Gladiator didn't get stabbed before the final battle, then you know. Yeah. What do you call this? There's, there's got to be what is, what is the term for that, Seth? The, for the, the show the must go on. Act, extra burden on the hero. Oh, extra burden on the hero. Wait, what? Say like, like I feel like it. Like if you do the final fight with the main bad guy and the the hero has one advantage they've been able to push, you take it away for the final fight. Oh yeah, uh, nothing's coming to mind for what that's called. Well, let's see. Excellent. Okay, we're back in yeah. business, everybody. In the storyboard workbook from Plot Devices, yeah. which you can get at plotdevices.co. Oh my gosh. The Guys, insight- I, I, look, check this out. I, I am kind of in love with how well the, this, the, this background works. Wow, that's awesome. It's, just, uh, that's, it's amazing. Okay, now, now we got to do smile. Okay, what, what does it look like? Uh, Seth, do you have time to look this up? You got nine minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, seconds. don't, don't, yeah. I got time okay, for whatever so, I want. All right, so let's start with a, um, uh, an adjustment layer. Or do I want an adjustment layer or do I want it right on the layer? I'm going to try it right on the layer. I'm going to add a uh, liquify. Uh, distort, liquify. And instead of just jumping right in and, oh, you know what? I really should do the, do the inverse uh, 
uh, face stabilizing business. It would save a lot of time. Uh, but, oh my gosh. There's not a ton. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to... I'll maybe take the eye and the nose. And I'm going to do what I want to do. My, my brain is completely <laughs> freezing for what I want to do here. Okay, I want to take the... <laughs> this is so exciting. Okay, I want to use track motion, and I want to put uh, one of the dots there on the pupil, and one, and, and I'm going to do rotation as well. I'm going to ignore scale for now. And maybe I'll just do the eyes, because the eyes seem pretty firmly open this whole time, which is nice. So I'll do that. I've created uh, two track points like this. But I'm not going to run the actual tracker to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab those already tracked uh, measurements from down here. So the face track points, I've got the right eye, I've got the left eye. So uh, for track point one, I'm going to copy the left pupil settings and paste them right here. Do I paste them in feature center or attach point? I think it's attach point. And then right eye, I'm going to grab the right pupil and paste that to the attach point of that layer. I will change the stabilize type or, you know, the tracker type to stabilize and then apply it and then say, OK. And then what that should do for me is I should now have, yeah, look at this, a centered and tracked face, which actually looks pretty creepy by itself. You can see the shoulders and everything are moving around that. So now I can play with just uh, the the uh, the static uh, effect of this. So let's, uh, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to pre-compose the, the woman. How much time we got? Oh, six minutes. Six minutes. Oh, boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, this is going to be fun. Wait, it's going to be fun. It's 45 seconds. You've got and 45 seconds. Oh, that's practically seven. What am, what am I talking about? Pre-compose. <laughs> Move all things uh, stabilized. All right. So now in here, I'll quickly add a, uh, a liquefy effect. And because the, the head is pretty stationary, I'll just grab uh, the bloat tool. I'll make it about this big and just tap the eye a few times. Maybe one, two, three, four times. So that... Those are some kind of slightly creepy, bigger eyes. Um, I'm going to maybe go even a little bit more with them to like bug out the whole area. What do we think? That's, that's kind of creepy because it's got to be pushed, but not too much. So on this specific liquify, I'll call it the eyes. And I'll set the percentage keyframes to be high by here, but I'll start them out a little bit smaller. Still slightly bigger, so the whole time it's creepy, but they get a little bit bigger by the end here. Uh, I think I've gone too far, actually, with the size there. So maybe back to here. They've got to be just annoyingly that size. And then uh, I'll add another instance of liquify here, and we'll call this one a uh, smile. And this will just be to distort the the face's smile into a wider shape. And then, then the last burden is going to be trying to add some like scary sharp teeth to this scenario because uh, right now it's it, it's kind of simple. Okay, so let's pull back the corners of the mouth with some liquify. Whoops, I'm trying to grab the skin next to the teeth, so I'm keeping the teeth a little bit more intact. And I'm what I'm exaggerating is this shadowy part of the mouth and it's gonna this is gonna be weird anytime you use a liquify on top of footage depending on how well the stabilize was was applied uh you can get kind of varied results um so uh i mean this is this is adequately like yucky looking already so let's put the distortion percentage at uh 100 here but at the beginning We'll turn it down a little bit, like maybe not all the way to zero, but maybe here. And then we'll get wider for that open mouth moment. Uh, do we want an expression like a slightly more? 
like play with the browse a bit. What do we think? We got we got four minutes. We could play with the browse a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna do just slight evil browse. It's it's cartoonish, but you know, it can work. Slight cartoonish, uh, evil uh, eyebrows. Turn and like answer, this is not Premiere Pro. This is After Effects, as it says at the top of the screen. And uh, Hashi is using the new 2023 version that just released a few days ago at Adobe Max. But he's using features currently that have been in After Effects for seven plus. Yes, years. I'm. I'm using practically nothing. Nothing new here. Uh, uh, one thing that let's see. What what am I missing from here? I know that uh, there's a. Bah, 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 what 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 do we got? We got three minutes. Okay. Three what minutes are the three, what, three minutes? I'm actually done. You're done. What? Oh my goodness! Why aren't we on your screen? Well, uh, I do. Do you want to? Let's. Do we want to watch hey, them when no, the timer's no, yeah, done? S- switch over. Do your thing. I'm. I'm. I'm going to try to find some. Uh, okay. So I've got this plate here that I shot of me wearing the green mask. I put my hoodie on. I look around a little bit, uh, and I take the hoodie off, and then I put on some fake glasses. I reach down, pick up some fake glasses, and I put them on. And I look around, and so, uh, you know, there's several things going on here. And oh, wait, what? What just happened? That's weird. Oh my gosh, we have two minutes and twenty seconds before we are we are deaded. Anyway, that was actually my joke. Was just I take the green mask off, good, and then I'm invisible joke. underneath. Thank you very much. I like that joke. That's all. That's what I was doing, Trickster. Well Hashi, done. What are you? Trickster. Doing? Go back to what you're Classic doing. Classic trickery. All right, so I am oh, wait, I am right screen. now going to attempt to bring in some uh, uh, creepy teeth here. So I'll call these the teeth. Uh, one minute left. This is going to be weird. Let's see if I can paint bucket tool out the background here. Um, okay, pretty well. Like you could try keying it too, but I have a feeling that there's a lot of overlap here. Okay, here we go. That's that's good. And we'll switch that to blending mode, stencil, alpha, invert, and then uh, a little bit of matte choker. Oh, this doesn't have all of my favorites installed on here yet. Okay. Uh, matte choker, a little bit more uh, right here. Okay. Uh, now we've got this, and now we've got to go back to our smile here. Oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this. You've got a okay. minute and three. Minute three. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is scale this down. You know what? We actually, we probably need, I'm going to put the teeth in their own pre-comp, and then I'm going to... What, oh, oh four, 45. Seconds? No, this is unfair. This is ridiculous. Okay, uh, the top teeth, and we're going to uh, liquefy them. Uh, I can't spell. 34. 34, okay. Uh... Control, figure, make, be a, be a smile thing. There. And, uh, and then uh, layer, new. 20 seconds. Solid. 20 seconds. Uh, we need a black solid behind it. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, there's the black solids behind it, the teeth too. The woman, uh, not that one. Oh. You want this one in here. And then Five, that's there, four, and then four, 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 no, 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 four, no, three, no, I, knew, I thought I'd have more time. <laughs> Wait, no. So close. <laughs> I am, my, my largest apologies to uh, this, this, to this, this lovely model. stock model. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we got close. If we, if we, we got... We got interestingly uh, somewhere. Does yours so, move? Like, Does your distor- so let's let's show your got. distortion moving though. So there we go. It's uh, <laughs> it's terrible. We 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 have we have none of none of this the spooky factor that I that I was hoping. I, I figured it, it wouldn't be hard to get to uh, creepifying somebody, but uh, but you can all you can always fail in in new ways that you didn't know. That's to see. That's the that's the magic of visual effects is that you can always fail in brand new ways every day. 
Always uh, making new mistakes. Some, some people want to see the reversed stabilization, Hashi. Yeah. Fine. Have you set that part so, up yet? Have you set so it up? Because I gave so you, you, I gave you, you SOB. You then? I, my, bra- my brain can't, can't, can't parse that right now. You, you take the uh, uh, position, put it back on the thing. I don't remember how to do it, right? That's why we made SOB and RBF. So you can it just is. do That's it. What, yeah, Seth made a tool because we have to remember how to do this every time. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say this is here's my here's my piece. I, I stole an extra minute or two here. It's oh, uh, I... that that end pose is is definitely not uh, all I hoped it would be. But maybe here could be a pretty good shot. Anyway, that's that's the fun of the timer, Seth. So, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? My goodness. Bird what Dimmick, else? Casper. Uh, Casper, Casper we've seems got fun. Goatee. I kind of want to do Casper. Do Casper, man. I am going to do Casper. What are you going to do? Casper Van Deem. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's going to be... Casper Van Deem will be our... <laughs> I just typed Casper Van Deem in a sketch fab. Let's see. Uh, Michael, have you been... Uh, had an eye on the chat at all? Uh, if uh, If there were... Yeah, uh, any uh, suggestions from stuff that uh, I'm feeling uh, I'm, I'm feeling uninspired right now. Suggestions? And, and I need some, yes, there were suggestions. Hang on, let me get. Back I need, I need some inspiration from my from a, my amazing uh, children. Mustache on Henry Cavill at plane crash from Air Force One. Uh, Invisible Man, Kevin Bacon version, where you can see the veins. Uh, tsunami. From two, twenty from the movie twenty twelve, if you'll recall that lovely fluid simulation uh, crash destruction scene. Uh, Dari Facinto wants the She Hulk twerk scene, and Kyle Hamrick wants the underwater sequence from Escape from New York, complete with a shark that tries to bite. On every himself. vacation. Oh, we we got ads. No worry about that. Uh, don't do the uh, twerking scene because that's basically just. So that's basically just uh, a mixamo. It is just mixamo. Yeah, we can't. We can't do that. Jason so, Murphy says you can use a mini puff if you want it. So Jason Murphy has has, has, has provided me with with uh, an amazing model of uh, mini puff. Do we have Do we have a regular size puff? Because I can't find a real. I can't find a good model for it. I don't know. That's no worries. No uh, worries. All right. So yeah, how much prep do we do before we before we decide what what it is? Uh, I, I like. What were what were, all, what were all of those suggestions again? I like I liked one of them, and I'm I'm forgetting we, which one I like. They it were was... birdemic. Oh, oh, all of those suggestions. Sorry. Go ahead. Did you did you did you like the uh, suggestion for the underwater New York scene with the shark? That it, like it, that's thing. that's a, a bit of a lot there. I'm concerned about that. Though I do, I do kind of like the idea of trying uh, an Invisible Man, Kevin Bacon style uh, thing. Oh, I, I feel I, like I that. Think, now they're scrolled back in the chat. I don't want to let Patrick Adkins think we'd not seen his Seth Burley comment about Seth's beard. Uh, yes, we we think that it's a very funny joke, Patrick. Thank you. Great job. All right. Uh, so um, the, the ideas were the plane crash from Air Force One. Ghost I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a hollow man, a hollow man face. Hollow man. Okay. All right. So, are we starting the timer? Um, oh darn! I guess we are. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna try to film a little uh, plate of sorts. Yeah, I'm gonna have to film plate two. I'm trying to decide what my Casper is gonna be like. If I do Casper Van Dien, I have to turn him into kind of a ghost. Uh, I've got to find a Casper oh, Van Dien. Uh, what do I need? I need. I also thought about finding like an illustrated, like flat version of Casper the ghost and just rotoing him out and putting him into a, a plate. But uh, let's see. Where's footage of Casper Van Dien just being Casper okay. Van Dien? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I've, I've, I've filmed a, a plate of me just uh, looking around on, on my phone. Which well, I'll have I, a ghost. So hello, I'm your ghost. Pretend hey, that's not to what notice I was it. gonna do. Pretend not to notice it. Upload. I gotta upload a photo here. Let's let's upload this this Hashi, video. Hashi, you took your glasses off and revealed you're beautiful all along. 
I was. I was not just just. It's not just the brains. It's the it's the brains and the poor eyesight. Brains uh, let's see. All right. Uh, I am wisely on hotel Wi-Fi uploading a piece of video. Michael, you're that looked funnier. Just in Skype, like not in this box. Just this, is this lonely ghost sitting on Skype. I looked over at Skype and I saw it was the one, not that one, it's the one where you're like eating something or something. I don't remember. It was like right after that. It was uh, the background was normal. This one. In fact, I'm going to go to a view of just Michael so everyone can see why this is so funny. I don't know. Uh, oh no! Oh, it was timer Whoa. restarted. Oh well, my gosh, that's a we fluke. got soft and and we got we got checked. All right, so. All right. Oh goodness <laughs> gracious, San Ignatius! Oh yeah, my hair is amazing today. Uh, let's see what what am I trying to do? I want to start here. Da, 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 da. This this is not going to be a a very crazy shot, uh, but. I, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to 3D track my head, uh, f- like erase the background, which I should have. I'm right here. I should have shot a plate. I didn't. Uh, uh, what, what does the background look like? Uh, background looks like like this. Yes, that that was that was that was poor poor thinking. Usually, I try to I try to film a plate and the shot at the same time, which you know what? Let's let's do that. I'm going to film a plate and then move myself out, so I know that I'm I've got kind of a same lighting condition background situation. So I'm doing Casper. I'm going to do. I've got this Miss Minutes here that I'm going to use as my ghost. She's going to fly around and and be the ghost that we always needed. So I'm going to set up my green screen. And uh, film Miss Minutes floating around, and then I'm going to find the right plate for it. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, I, I still need to get my footage back into here. Uh, what's your time right? 1820. All right. Uh, you know, this, this hotel Wi-Fi is, is serving me not too bad. Upload. Upload. Okay. Got to upload that video to the computer. I know I could probably do this with a wire or something, but I don't. I don't know where yeah. where wires are and how they how they work. All right. I forgot. Okay. It's uploading. It's uploading. Thanks. We're we're getting there. Oh god. Whoa, Seth. Seth with a green screen. I forgot uh, what what is your plan, Seth? Huh? What what is your your plan? Plan? Oh, I'm making this up as I go. No, I am going to. I think I said it a second. I'm going to film Miss Minutes floating around on this green screen here, being a ghost. Maybe some dynamic move like that, like, hi there. And then I'll film a plate. God, I'm out of breath. This green screen is huge. And then <laughs> I am uh, going to composite them. Now, the thing is, the thing about Casper that I noticed. The thing about Casper, that's the, that's the follow-up, uh, like, spin-off sitcom. Well, it's doing, like, a, like a screen or ad blend mode thing there where, like, this Luma thing where, like, it, it's very cleverly uh, isolating his face and making it less transparent by putting this harsh key light on his face um, that's hitting him from, like, a quarter or from the side. And so I... Could do that practically here, but it'd be a little difficult because I have all these windows and I don't have any lights mm. except for my lamps. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do that practically here or if I actually want to. I think I'm going to track it on Miss Minutes and do it digitally. I have 16 minutes, so I need to shut up and just okay. do it. So yeah, just just do it. Just do it. All right. You want me to go to your well, After I'm, Effects? I'm going to do it. Let's see. I'm in After Effects. I've got my uh, clip of me just moving my head around a little bit like that, and what I'm going to hopefully do is I'm going to try to uh, roto out uh, my head here. And I should have done this on a keyable surface. That would have been wise. Uh, but I'm going to try to rely on Roto Brush 2 for this. So uh, let's open up our footage layer. Let's go to uh, Roto Brush. And I'm going to make a slightly smaller brush. And uh, Roto Brush 2 loves uh, segmentation. So 
if you can give it a bunch of different segments for it to be tracking, even if it feels redundant, uh, it'll often help you in the end because it'll know what areas of your image to find instead of just doing one big squiggly line across everything. So this is going to be that side of the neck. This is going to be this side of the neck. It's going to be that. Uh, we'll, we'll hope for the best here. And then for the top, let's grab the Refine Edge tool, make it a little bit bigger, and grab all of this stupid, the the stupid Hashi hair. That is just frustrating. Okay, there we go. Uh, and let's maybe alt out some of that. So we're just getting the edge there. And we have to say Rotor Brush 2 because the original Rotor Brush sucked so bad that it's my that it's a completely different tool. I mean it is a I mean it literally is a completely different algorithm under the hood. Yeah, the the if you tried Roto Brush and so you never tried Roto Brush 2, you were missing out on an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, you'll see that I basically established what I wanted my mat to be here, roughly. And right now Rotor brush is going to chug across these seven seconds, including this very fine mat for my hair up here. Uh, you can I see that it's doing. Can't see a... Hashi because the timer is in the way. Oh, the timer is in the way. But uh, let's see. I'll. I'll uh, Got to do. Nope. Nope. Uh, I'll scrub it down. Look at. Look at this beautifulness. That amazing. That's, that's doing a surprisingly good job of knowing what it is and isn't hair. So I'm playing through, and then as it goes through, as it steps through each uh, new frame, you can see that it's just uh, because I put little tracking markers on my nose, on my chin, on all of the parts of my face that I knew would at some point like poke out uh, from the body of my face. That segmentation trick makes it, and so. After Effects is looking for them ahead of time. It's a really good idea, even with human figures, which Rotor Brush 2 is exceptional at medium shot human figures moving around. But um, if you segment them, you, you get a cooler result. So so tip uh, tip of the day from me. And uh, let's so see. You're saying oh. like, by, like the forearm should be one stroke, the upper arm should be a different stroke, the chest area... The, for a for a medium shot, so you should have a stroke per major limb, basically. Exactly, and uh, and if they're doing a lot of chaotic movement, you can you can get as detailed as like make it look like a little like uh, primitive rig, basically, because like because that will really help guide, uh, like it it looking for like just a forearm that's flying around through frame and keeping with that is quite it, it is quite good at. But following the shape of an arm that keeps on bending and twisting and is an unpredictable shape at every time we can get confusing. So, uh, yeah, throw it a bone and then uh, and then check out how amazing uh, Rotor Brush 2 can be. Uh, Trevor McPherson says, why is this called a VFX and chill when they, this is completely harrowing? These timers are like the world's worst client. Yeah, it's that a is deadline to me. That is, sure. that is because this these this episode is a VFX and kill episode is, is what or vfx are. and thrill if you prefer a little bit less violence although that, that is a stick of dynamite up there so it is, I, it I is think dynamite. it's vfx and, and thrill. Uh, yeah we will die if uh again if uh, we have not <laughs> done our jobs well okay okay we're we're tracked all the way through i don't know if i should freeze it or if i should just trust you that should always freeze it you should have just fr frozen it from the beginning always I, always I know. always freeze, freeze. okay Freeze! All right. Oh my gosh, this is this is a nerve-wracking part. So, Hashi, why, why, why you wait? Eleven. Why you wait for this freezing to happen? Now is a good time to talk through your plan for the rest of it, so you have like a good structure. That's for a good how point. And in, in fact, one of one, one of my hopeful stages was to find a uh, a like a rubber mask of sorts. So look at that amazing work by Vlad. There's 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 a copycat online that made a tutorial of uh, how to make a a similar piece, which is which is very flattering. Uh, but yeah, the the rest of my plan, right? Uh, the rest of my plan is to try to create a rubber mask of sorts, 
that fits over my head, uh, erase my head, track my head, and replace my head with a rubber mask. And this rubber mask specifically needs to have holes for the eyes and mouth that are revealing the back of the inside of my head. Now, the way that this... I'm, I'm going for a full head uh, CG replacement, which is a little bit silly because... But I, I did that because I don't have a rubber mask with me. I, I'm, I'm traveling and I left it in my other bag. <laughs> but uh, if I were really telling you to do this, I would do what they did in the film, which is uh, put a green sock over your head and then put on the rubber mask so you have a real rubber mask. Track the head, figure out what the geometry of it is, and then key the uh, back of the head into the space. But I don't, I don't got that luxury right now. So... What we're going to do is we're going to dive into cinema. Um, let's see. Have I... Uh, I'm trying to think of what, if I've updated that or not. I have not. So <laughs> I have not uh, installed the Sketchfab importer yet. But I'm going to go onto Sketchfab and check out if, uh, if Rubber Mask has anything good in it. Uh, let's see. Nine minutes and 28 that? seconds. Oh my gosh. So let's see. I want a. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know what I want for this. Uh, mannequin head, maybe. Okay. And did I check downloadable? I remember. Okay. So. Let's find, you know, there's, there was likely a, a great version of something in the asset library, too. So let me, let, let's just do that since we're running short on time. We're under 10 minute mark. So let's go. Hey, do you guys think that a uh, roto brush would, or, or that, uh, that face tracker would track this? Well, uh, the, no. I don't think the, the 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 actual face tracker would track this. That's oh, look nice. at this generic head. Ah, I love generic head. I'm gonna download that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not. Um, don't don't. I, I'm just gonna. Hmm? Mm, what are you talking about? I'm just gonna sit here it's and here I'm going to face. go, go to the point from the sculpting point collection. Point. Okay, so check this out. So yeah, so right here from the asset browser, we we I brought in a. Uh, just a, a generic head, which I will, let's see. No, go away now. I don't need you anymore. Uh, close. Okay. I'm going to make it more like a, uh, uh, I don't want the brush selection. I want maybe a lasso to lasso out the bottom of this. Trying to do this while that tracking, I mean, while that roto brush locking happens in the background. Uh, what do we got? I probably could have done a ring selection for this, right? This yes, this this model this, has really good. This could topology. have been an email. Solid, solid loop selection would have been. Guys, smooth. okay, face tracker didn't work, but you know what did work? Freaking camera tracker. Camera tracker. So nice. now I got a solid flying Wait. around on this in this miss minutes. Let's see if I if my thing is frozen. I'm going to run the camera tracker in a second here. Uh, so we've got my roto brushed uh, face. And we've got the background there. And what I want to try to do is, let's see, I'll pre-compose this so it's, there's no way it is uh, monkeying with anything. And I'm going to run the camera tracker on it. Uh, where is it? Track. Track camera. It's going to try tracking my face in the background, which hopefully works while I jump back into uh, Cinema 4D and do a little bit more point deletion. So let's... How big do I want these eyes to be? I kind of like how big. Uh, again, I learned nothing from the from the potential loop selection situation here. Okay, <laughs> undo that. Undo that. <laughs> you, uh, you. Okay, uh, I think. here we go. Okay, I'm going to select those and shift select these and delete them. Select these and those. Delete them. And this. Oh dang, that's pretty good. That's that's sort of what I want is the is the creepy uh, being able to see through something. And I'm gonna also try to grab. We have a loop here. That feels pretty cool. 
uh, let's, uh, I would add some kind of like Morphe blend shape stuff to this, but, uh, we're, we're, we're too tight on time. So let's call this, uh, uh, generic head bust. Let's leave that there. And I want a material on it. So let's try, um, uh, you know what? I should go back to my, my asset browser and go to materials and let's just try cloth. Oh no, I, it's, it's supposed to be, it's like, it's weird, like latexy, right? Rubber, black rubber. No, I don't like that. Okay, I'm going to have to pick a different material. But let's save this 3D model at least as, uh, where is our episode here? Under here, 3D stuff, mask. Oh no, my Canadian keyboard, or my, my weird accented keyboard is enabled for some reason. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, let's jump back into After Effects and see how the analyzing is going. Oh my gosh, it is analyzing so slowly. So I'm going to have to I'm going to close uh, Cinema 4D and try to give this thing a little bit more power. Oh, this is tense. Are you playing, oh, are you in the beta or no? You're in the public release of After Effects. So I'm in the public release. Oh, so oh, 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 the, the beta version of After Effects that just came out during Max has native 3D model import functionality. It's rough. That's why it's in the beta, but it is there. And. Okay, in the meantime, uh, the, since I don't have that, I'm going to go with my good old friend Element and bring in, uh, let's see, we have, we have so many Raptor assets. Uh, what am I going for? Element 3D four, stuff. Four minutes and five seconds. Four minutes, oh my gosh. Presets, Pro, did my, did I, do I at least have my Pro shaders? Okay, cool. Uh, let's, let's grab... Um, you know, I'm going to go for a fabric effect anyway, because that sounds fun. Uh, for the environment, let's grab one of the generic uh, environments. The hotel is sort of this kind of a deal, maybe. Uh, what looks like a, this hotel room? Uh, it really doesn't matter at this point. I'm just going to say it looks like that in the background, and we'll say OK. Uh, and then... In the meantime, let's add a null, and we'll see if the camera tracker got my face. And it did for the whole thing. Okay, so we, uh, I'm going to go to a frame where I'm looking as straightforward as possible, which I think should be right here. I'll grab this forehead spot and the corners of my mouth, maybe, uh, create a solid and camera right there. It's looking good. And then I'm going to call this uh, the wall because I'm going to use my normalized track script, uh, which basically puts this uh, in the center of the world. So now if I go to element and I, uh, I created a null already, right? Cool. So I'll scale this up. What do we got? We got two minutes. Oh, I forgot. In element, I've got to enable, uh, first of all, that texture looks kind of like garbage. Uh, let's try this one. I don't know. Uh, and we've got to check render back faces. Where is that? It's, it's in the advanced settings. Uh, oh my God. Draw back faces. Okay. Oh, and that texture is even worse. Uh, two, minutes? Two, two minutes. Why? 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 Why would we? Two minutes. Two minutes. Why are these the rules? Who made, who, made, who made these silly rules? Okay, there we go. Okay, so Hashi face. Where's the original comp? And, uh, oh, nuts. You see, now I need the, uh, man, I'm not going to have uh, time to erase this stuff, am I? I've got to, I'm going to scrub to the end because I know I moved myself out of the frame for a second so I could, <laughs> no. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. One minute. I I don't know how this is going to go. One minute and fifteen seconds. Fifteen. Okay. Seconds. So what I'm trying to do is roughly align the uh, the face mask element with where I think the uh, my head is going to be, which is not bad. It's it's like reasonably on track. It's a little bit. 
can't tell where it is in Z space, but we're getting some weird errors. Like what I would normally do is add a couple of keyframes throughout to try to keep that on point. But uh, that seems okay for now. I forgot that I, I've got to check that box in here in the last 45 seconds to draw the back faces again. Do that. Uh, okay, we got that. Uh, render settings. Do I have a little bit of ambient occlusion or something enabled? 30 seconds, Seth. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. I did not even get to the... Uh, uh, the bit of this that I, I really wanted to do, which was taking the original footage using the roto brushed thing as a track mat, which, oh my gosh, I forgot. It's the new version of this all. So, uh, oh, no, no, alpha, not Luma, inverted. All right. Oh, mm. got blown up. I got somewhere I kind of like. How'd you do? Um, I did not get to what was supposed to be the, uh, the moment where I just like tracked my empty background for a second into the background. So, and I also didn't paint in the inside of my shirt, which was my other plan. So, uh. so I did, I did a little rough. Let, let's, let's try to Ram preview this, uh, maybe at half res. So what do we got? We got uh, go, 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 gadget, playback. Yeah, did not get where I wanted to with this. Like, what I was excited about, oh, my ambient occlusion has turned up way high. Uh, very low poly model, first of all. I could have thrown it into a subdivision surface or, or made it a little bit better. But what I was hoping to do was to have you know a kind of see-through neck and I wanted that the effect from Hollow Man where you can see <laughs> through the face uh, to, you know, to that cool inside of it. But, uh, man, my my not getting to the background replacement part is uh, uh, I kind of I kind of like the the uh, the look you've got going on here. I think for a different kind of creature, it'd be neat to have kind of like the background, but just like slightly wrong. Like the way your hair mm -hmm. is like poking around there it just looks Weird and great. I love it. It, does, it. it is an unusual type of creature, for sure. So, like, if this were... Let me see. I'm just curious. If I tried to do something like... Uh, oh, I didn't mean Rough and Edges. I meant Matt Choker, right? If I, like, choked that out a little bit and feathered it... Oh, see, I could have done that. And I could have gotten a little bit further... And then the next thing that I would have done, like, obviously, I could have tracked in the background. I made a better background for here. But uh, then the, the next thing after that that I would have done is I would have made a duplicate of, the, uh, of Hashi Face. And one thing you may notice that happened right there is when I duplicated Hashi Face, uh, I did set up the Roto Brush 2 as an inverted alpha mat, meaning it punched out this data. But then when I duplicated this layer, I want you all to see... It's still happening on this one, and that is because of the new amazing universal track mat options in After Effects. Track mats can yes, be just one layer. Mats are my, one of my favorite new features. Incredible, incredible stuff. So After Effects team, it is, we are so thankful in the community for that because we've needed it, uh, except for in this case, we actually don't, so I'm going to switch it back to none. And then... What I would always do is instead of trying to like color match and do anything like that, I would just probably like make a little circle selection from my shoulder here and then kind of transform it, put it down below everything, and then uh, I could just slide it uh, right here. There we go. Uh, instant inside of uh, my shirt. It's sort of the right shadow color. It's uh, key to there. And see, like if these were like. Imagine what we could do with like 35 minutes, but but 20, 20 makes for good television. It's like the cooking shows, it's like nailed it, where you don't give people enough time to do it legit, uh, and that's where the fun comes from. So look at this, I, I like this, and it wasn't it wasn't that many more minutes of of cheated time. Uh, people will learn quickly that I do not respect the timer in this uh, <laughs> in these episodes. But uh, but there we go, check it out, uh, Hollow Man, Seth. Where did you end up? I made this ghost. 
I love it. That's a good ghost. That, that, that ghost is out of time. I don't know. I, I, well, it, it, it could have no, been that, a little that's better. That's all the good elements. Yeah. It, it, uh, it does. It, so that, the original looks like... Uh, let, me see, let me turn off. Just looks like... She looks like this. If I can turn off Rotor Brush and Primat. That's what I shot. Flying around. Rotored it. Using Primat to get rid of the, the spill. And then I uh, camera tracked just this uh, uh, and uh, put this solid on here that, uh, well, we're not, the camera's not in the uh, thing. Hang on a second. <laughs> so. Then I had the solid flying around with her. Uh, and on the solid, I put CC Spotlight. And then I uh, used that as a Luma mat. And so, and then I put a darker Miss Minutes down underneath. So I have this top layer here, excuse me, that's set to additive mode. This bottom layer that's set to screen mode that's just where her levels are turned down. So now Never. I've created this like, the simulated lighting in the same way that Casper did um, to be able to like, uh, you know, uh, isolate which uh, parts need to be more transparent, which parts need to be less transparent. And so I think I can push it even more, honestly, like if I grab some curves and did up and down with the S curves, uh, I brought it into here into, uh, then I uh, did like a color vibrance thing on it. I did some glow, Optical glow on it. Um, I use optical glow on all the things. I love it so much. It's and so fun. then, instead of going into super comp, I just put an adjustment layer under here and um, used used that layer as an alpha mat for the adjustment layer and put some uh, put blur, just a little bit of fast blur on it. And I would have done a little more things. So then, then you can see that like. The background, here it is with it off, here it is with it on. It blurs the background oh, behind it. Chromatic displacement might be good for that, too. That's a better idea. Let's do... Ooh, yeah. drive, drive the chromatic displacement by the miss, miss minutes. That's smart. So instead of an alpha mat, we'll do miss minutes ghost. Let's uh, turn off miss minutes here, and then let's turn up. And let's soften it. And then let's see... I mean, a little bit of the blur, too, would be good. Uh, there's a universe compound blur effect. Oh, that's that would be fun. Good for that. That's really fun. I wonder if... Do you do you push in a negative, or do you do... Like, should it be I negative mean, displacement? I how optically you want it to be. Like, I think you just need to do a subtle version of that without too much softening, and then use, like, uh, universe compound blur or just the fast blur to just soften it some more. Compound blur. That's smart. Compound blur could be really cool. Uh, and let's set it for Mr. Miss- for the regular. I do, I do, I do enjoy this part of uh, of uh, showing the the slapdash part, and then showing the refine process because if you think about it, it it lets you know that working really really hard to get set up may not be as necessary as you think, depending on what what type of project you're doing. Oh, look at that! That's real interesting. I'm it's a ghost. That. And you know what? If I set it to use effects and masks and I blur it a little bit even more. Oh, yeah, that is a very good trick. If you're using uh, any kind of displacement mapping, if you have a duplicate of your layer with some blur on it, and yeah, are using it with effects and masks as the displacement map. It's it's a fun way to get to add softness to your displacement. And there's some of that built in to uh, to chromatic displacement, which is really nice. So you can uh, still use the original layer and soften it, which is what I did for that uh, liquid metal terminator thing at the very beginning. But uh, knowing how to do this uh, would work for uh, like the built-in After Effects uh, displacement. Uh, should you need it for something like this. So the point that, is, that, we did it. That is, that is plussed in, in a very lovely way. I, I like the way that 
uh, Miss Minutes ghost <laughs> is appearing. She's... And and, you, and honestly, Miss Minutes has has the vintage aesthetic of of a Casper uh, ghost. Yeah, I don't remember. Eyes, eyes are perfect. Who? What studio did did Casper and uh, P? Not not Peabody and uh, Sherman. Who was the other one? The uh, there was another character, the the human Casper. <laughs> the human Casper. Oh. No, like there was a there was a kid that that looked that the cartoon looked just like Casper uh, by the same studio at about the same time. I still remember they had a a you, striped red and white shirt or orange and white shirt. And are you talking about Devin Sawa as Casper in the movie Casper? No, no. The uh, chat is all saying Richie Rich. Not Richie Rich. It was like it you could get you could get a like a plush, maybe talk doll of it at the, I mean, I don't doubt that Richie Rich could have been made by the same thing. Oh but my gosh. What you're saying is, of, oh my God, it's coming back to me. Keep going. It's what like, are you it talking like a pull string doll and it had red hair that like, by the time you saw it in real life had like was yarn that had like melted down to the face and it, and they had a Casper and they had a, whatever the other character's name is. And I feel like it was in the realm of Peabody, but it, but I know that I, that's probably because of, I'm thinking of Peabody and Sherman. So I don't, I don't rightly remember, but something like it oh, man, existed. It's exciting to think about, though. I swear. Now they're chat, chat is like Raggedy Andy, Archie. Uh, no, not Raggedy Andy or Archie. Doug Appleton in the chat suggests to plus up your Miss Minutes a little bit more, Seth. Add some chromatic displacement around the edges so that Miss Minutes is distorted in the air around her. That's smart. So, uh, oh, you mean chromatic aberration, right? No, he, mean, he, he means making it, like scaling it up a little bit, like, like blurring it and using levels to, to make your displacement map a little bit outside the edges. So that it's not just happening inside, but also a little bit on the edges. It's actually what I'm doing right now. It's actually happening a little bit around the edges right now um, because I blurred the map. Uh, mm. See, it's a little bit around the edges. It's creating, but we want more of it. So what are we saying to do then? We're saying to. I'm not sure. In the meantime, I I was able to kind of quickly. Not not the best ever, but uh, realign the uh, the background footage with a with a tracked null, so I could have more of a consistent background in my comp here. Let's see. Which uh, let's see, I probably need to add a rotation keyframe. Did I did I save the rotation? No, I didn't. Uh, so let's rotate that to match that little seat in the background. So here we go. So now what I have added to this is. We have the roto brushed out face. We have a copy of the shirt from over here, just moved over here. And I I scaled it up, but left it as live footage. So it'll have all the noise and everything. And in theory, as it, it as my body moves around, the inside of the shirt will move around a little bit. Uh, I added the uh, CC light sweep, just like uh, in your like dino shader thing, to add a black feathered swatch it's it may be reading pretty dark in the on the stream i'm not sure but to darken the inside kind of like a like some kind of a hollow man <laughs> maddie mattel that could be it let's see yes <laughs> thank you <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. This, the they, de there were definitely. I'm pretty sure that whoever made this one made a Casper as well. So Maddie Mattel, Casper. Let's see if I can see them together. Yes, there you are, everybody. Sleep well. Enjoy your. Uh, I don't know why this. Red started off with someone's neck bruising close-ups. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I apologize for that. But uh, let's open this image in a, in a, in its own little tab, so we can just look at. Okay, Maddie, Casper, and Bell. I, I do not, <laughs> I, 
I do not know what uh, what they are from, but they're delightful. Absolutely delightful. Uh, Seth, someone suggests adding some fire stock footage to your ghost head. I think instead That's just of that, trap code particular would be better because it'd give you a little bit more organic, uh, like separation, like to be able to follow the movement better than just fire stock footage would. Okay. Yeah, or, or you know, or just use, ecto. I think we've already talked through enough plussing up these shots. I think we have enough time left <laughs> to do one more. Oh, we do, we do. Although, okay, although, time, hold on, I do, I one, do just want to see what happens. One more spooky shot. Instead of doing optical, instead of doing uh, color vibrance, I'm gonna hang on. I just want to apply ecto here because I forgot <laughs> that we had ecto. We've lost him, Michael. Well, you can't hear oh, me. Uh, oh, you can. I can't believe you need anything to do ecto. Switch to your screen so you can see it. Seth. Oh, I forgot. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah, where'd it go? I will have at least one still from each of these shots. That is what I was going for. Uh, let's see. There's my screen. Ecto <laughs> looks not great. Hang on. We can make it look great. A ghost. Film glow. Uh, no. Ah. Yeah, I know. The film glow is much better. Poltergeist. Looks pretty good. A librarian. I used that one recently for a post. Uh, for today's pro for today's show, actually, the promo post for today's show uses that preset. I just tweaked it significant somewhat. Uh, yeah, this was looking better the way I did it before. Um. Anyway, guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, we we got to get to to the last thing here. All so, right, so what uh, are we gonna do next? Oh, uh, what do we want to try here? All right. Um, I, let me take a look at the. Can you can you yeah. cycle through our gifts again? Okay, so, so we've got Casper. We've got. I'm I'm kind of curious about uh, about trying the the ring one. I think. I was thinking about that too. Okay, so. Why don't you both? Why don't you both do the ring one? All right, we'll both do the ring one. But I, I'm in, I'm gonna have not do the grabbing. I'm gonna just have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna reach into my television with that kind of like surface displacement stuff. That's, that's cool. That sounds good. How am I going to do I am going to try. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do something like trying to like push out of the TV. So like, they're like, like a mirror surface that is like, has the glitch is pushing forward or something. I'll think about it. Well, yeah, we'll figure it out. Well, let's start the timer. Oh my God, this is actually more right. work than I want to do. All right, here we go. Okay, starting the timer. Oh dear goodness, great to see. Uh, what do we got? Okay, uh, we need to film a, a plate. Uh, it oh looks crap! Sorry, I'm starting. All right, now it's starting. <gasps> there's that. There's a timer. There's a timer. Okay. All right. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to import that GIF and just take a quick look at what's going on here. Uh, the ring gif. Okay, so the thing reaches out, grabs the kid, pulls him into a TV, forward to a side view. Jeez. That's a complicated shot. There's a lot going on in it. Yes, there are. There is. I don't know what I would do. Let's see. Uh, ba 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 ba. I'm going to go over and try to film next to this TV set over here. Enjoy my... Me too. Michael, tell everybody what's going on. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Can't hear you, Mike. Can't hear you, pal. What's happening today oh, okay. is that Seth and Hashi are both doing spooky... Uh, visual effects on a timer. So we are doing that. We've been setting 20 minutes on the timer and letting them go. They're having to acquire and or capture assets and then do the effects. We've done little ghosty effects. We've done invisible person effects. And it's been, uh, so far, something of a blast. Right now, uh, both Hashi and Seth are doing different takes on visual effects from The Ring. 
where something comes out of or goes into a television set that's all kinds of analog glitchy. Uh, while they are working on gathering their assets for that, I would like to mention that if you want a nice analog and glitchy looking uh, look to any of your graphics, uh, Universe from Red Giant has a effect called analog that does emulation of what happens when a TV signal happens in old timey TVs. It's got things like phase and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So I would highly recommend checking that out as it's got, uh, like, there's a lot of cool presets for different kinds of different eras. So you can get TVs from, like, 50s all the way up through the 80s, uh, kind of how tube TVs worked, and you can get some pretty good effects on your footage that way. I think that Red Giant should probably put something about Universe Analog into the chat at some point. Ooh, that's a good idea. Red Giant, social media team, get on that. So if you want to get started with analog, uh, boom. Nope, not that button. Oh, man. Okay, let's see. I have So I'm uploading one uh, piece of footage that I filmed. It's going right now. It's uploading. It's uploading. we got 17 minutes left. Uh, I realize I, I want... Need an, I need another element, which is the... Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I, I want a spooky hand that's coming and grabbing a person, and I, I'm going to film that. Uh, I got uh, to grab a pillowcase. Now, the so, chat has, uh, I would say, the chat has suggested modernizing it by making it an iPad or mobile phone screen pulling you in, but that's not nearly as fun because they don't have any cool analog glitchy effects to play with. Yeah. Not that either of you can hear me. Yeah, yet. chat. We can okay, hear you. So, I, there, there's no there's no great keyable surface in this, uh, this space here. But I, I'm gonna try to try to give myself a little Roby a hand thingy, and and film it somehow. All right. I'll be back. I'll figure this out. <laughs> if we. <laughs> If we'd had camera operators that could follow you guys around, that would be great. So, uh, but yeah, unfortunately, Hashi is in a hotel and does not have access to children and slave labor. And Seth's are in school, so. Here, I'll turn this camera so we can see what I'm doing. I'm shooting it with my phone, but you guys can watch me do this ridiculous stunt that I'm about to do. There we go. We can't, we won't be able to hear him, but we'll be able to see him. So, Excellent. okay. This little cabin here, there was a TV on it. My phone is right down here-ish. My phone is like propped between a pillow and shooting this plate. I filmed a plate with just the TV there. And now I removed the TV and I opened the window. And I'm going to attempt to climb out the window in the same area generally where the TV is. So oh my gosh. here we go. Good luck. Don't die. We'll see. I'm on a third floor, so no, I'm kidding. It's first floor. I can't figure out how to film the the, the right hand because I need to film it from uh, a different angle than I can contort my arm to do. Well, keep in mind, you've got 14 minutes and 40 seconds Four, left. 14. Mm, oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, Seth, Seth going out the window looks great. It's good acting. Uh, okay. I've got to cover myself up with something Uh oh Gosh, with a lot of moray. And then uh, film my hand. Do this. We can do this. Oh, man, this hand is, is going to be the, the death of me. Let's see. When a cloth on your screen has a glitchy a sheen, that's a moray. It's a very good joke, those of you in the chat who aren't familiar with what I'm talking about. Wait, wait. Oh, gosh. Why did I spend so much time filming pieces? Why, and, and again, why 20 minutes? It's so stupid. Why, why, why? Okay. This was okay. your let's, idea, pal. Let's... Good gravy. Okay, okay, let's find this piece. Let's rename it. Hashi TV dot MOV, of course. Fine. 
All right. Let's bring in Hashi TV here. Beats, window, smoke, mirrors. Okay, here is. Let's begin the shot here and end it. I'm doing I'm doing some 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 crazy that's back a, that's bending. Good acting. I like that. I mean, I've never been sucked into a TV by VHS ghost hands, but, Wait, you know. You got to try it at least once in your life. Right. Okay. Uh, zero that out. Uh, this is going to be a completely untrackable shot, <laughs> which, which, is, uh, which is not wise. But uh, maybe this is a scenario I could use Mocha in. All right, uh, let's let's roto out Hashi because unfortunately we need a roto asset here. Uh, nope, that's not what I want to do. Nope, nope, nope. I want the roto brush tool, and we're going to use it very poorly today. We're going to use it like that, like that, like that. Blah 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 blah. Actually, that did the hair better than I thought it was going to. And uh, let's play forward, uh, Seth. You want? Oh yeah, there we go. Can you can see my amazing acting being live roto brushed? Uh, I'm just going to try to correct any egregious error, but I'm not going to get. I'm not going to use roto brush 2's full capabilities here. I, I'm just going to get something. Okay, I don't really mind if it goes wild over the head contact point. Uh, we're we're doing it. We're doing it. We've got the shirt. We've got it isolated. Um, doesn't know that's the back of my head. I don't know if that matters, if that pops on or off. Okay, there's that. Uh, it doesn't get my arm, but who cares? Who cares? That's going to be a glitchy, cool... Uh, that's the the like a penetration spot. Let's Gross. stop and... Okay, no time to freeze. We're just going to pre-compose it and hope that nothing happens. Okay, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? I'm screwed. That's not happening. Well, you've got 11 minutes, really. It's 10 minutes, 52 seconds. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> I might, shoot, I, I might need to actually freeze it. No, I didn't. I really didn't want <laughs> to freeze. You have to freeze. You have to. Undo. Freeze. Okay, undo. Edit. No, oh, gosh. All right, well, you deal with that. This is my, I, so I got this footage of me climbing out my window. The problem is it's very difficult to go straight and like plank your body out a window. Um, the big problem here, besides how <laughs> awesome I look, is that's the plate. Well, actually, it's not too bad. I might actually be able to do this. I thought the TV was lower than it was. You, Holy crap. Can. Now you, I have to. I think you've got roughly the right elements there. Oh crap! Okay, that, this is great. This is great. I, I I like what you're doing here. Oh man, I didn't know it was gonna work. It's gonna be so much work now. Here we go. Uh, gonna roto me myself. Oh nuts! I didn't. Uh... No. Oh, oh no! Oh, I shot gosh. it like sixty frames per second. And I regret it, Michael. I know you said to always freeze like literally moments ago and i didn't listen i'm sorry it just makes things go so much we need to always listen to michael drop too so we need a corridor did it and always listen freeze. to michael drop. justin Lugde says there ain't no way the girl from the ring has the core strength to pull your grown ass in the tv I mean, you, you did mention a good point. Leaning out through a screen the way she does, just carrying your own weight, does require a significant amount of core yeah. strength. I mean, you like think that when you die, you like, just I like have, get all the strength you ever needed. Want? I have trouble if there's like more than two drinks in the drink caddy at the drive-through, and like trying to get that into my car. I, I don't know how these people are Shh. dragging Crap. bodies. Why is Rotorbrush having such a hard time with these planters behind my hand and my watch? Come on. No, <laughs> stop it. 
No one like in this movie, this all the characters will wear full, full uh, neutral gray body suits. Yep. Oh, this sucks. Oh, uh, this is this is wild. You're, you got it. You got it. Uh, at what point is your hand through the TV, though? Great question. I think it's through it already. Is it? Uh, I guess not. It's not. You're right at the threshold. Though. <laughs> Surfing. This is stupid looking. All right. But yeah, anywhere past that, that where the that second window pane Doesn't starts. Doesn't look stupid when say. you have a beard like that. It's, uh... Oh, thanks, man. I'm getting a lot of a lot of positive reviews of this beard, except for my kids. My kids are not happy about it. Well, what do they know? What do they know? The kid, what the kids think of your look is irrelevant. What your spouse thinks of the look is what matters. Uh, let's just say she likes it. Leave it at that. Okay, there's there's no way this is this would work, right? If, for example, I have if this were an alpha mat, would this shot track? Will it track? Will it track? Maybe. You think that'll track? It's so reflective. It's so reflective. It's the it's the worst possible thing to track, but. Oh my god! I hasn't almost, ever worked before for anybody, but it might work for us. I almost want to reshoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. I, I'm sitting here. I'm like, man, how much time do we have? Six minutes? No. I, I feel like I could, I would just go reshoot this plate without this stupid planner back here. Oh, ah. What did I mean to do here? Uh, Don't you hate when Rotobrush just like really likes a certain object and is like, okay, but uh, you want me to take this planner, right? <laughs> no. Okay, good. Move all things into the thing. I'm going to zoom out to find that it's like lost my head. Why? Uh, Frosty, the beer man, says your roto quality is set to standard. Yes, because otherwise it takes long. And we have no, we, we do not have long time. We have short time. Six have have no, lo- no have long time. No have long time. Oh. Uh, well, and. So it's tedious. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot better than it used to be. Like, rotoring out this whole shot that, like, Seth is doing previously would be, like, an hours-long process instead of something that we can do in the midst of a 20-minute effect, VFX go. Yeah, I mean, and and honestly, like, tools for uh, image segmentation are uh, are getting smarter and faster than uh, than I thought they would get this quickly, so... Julian says, why, Roto, why not use both plates with a difference uh, and then threshold and use that as a luma? It never looks good. Probably due to the noise level yeah. of the capture. It, it never it never works. <gasps> it looks why? like photo, Apple Photo Booth circa 2007. I might as well do your, your visual effects in Zoom. Oh! Zoom burn. Here's where I got stuck and realized this is going to be very difficult. I was like, well, I guess I'm going outside. Well, this thing, only, the, the camera tracker, only, like literally only grabbed parts of the edge of my outline. <laughs> I'm so curious what it thinks this surface is. Okay, create a solid in camera. Where, where do you think that that is, camera? Yipes. Oh, 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 Hashi had done it again. Four minutes and 13 seconds. Why? Uh, this is, this, is, this fail is going to, this is a hard fail over here. Um, okay. Uh, maybe, maybe there's help from someone. Let's see. Production crate. Do you have, do you have help? Um, um, <laughs> Should, are we expecting them to call out back to us? Production crate, production crate, production crate. Don't they have? I thought they might have had a like scary ghost girl they got some or cool something. Scary sharks. Plenty of sharks. See, you should have done that underwater New York shot, Ash. Why well, I use the sharks no. in the little mermaid in our, our mermaid? Be, so. be done with that. We'd just be chatting now. 
Uh, Frosty the nuts, Beer Man nuts. says... Frosty love, the what, love man? Love these streams. So Frosty the Beer Man says, love these streams. Wish they could go on for hours more. You guys make everything look so easy. Thank you so much. And bad. That is as, as Hashi struggles with three <laughs> yeah. minutes and four seconds left. So easy and bad. No, oh, good gravy. No, I don't want the planter. Roto Brush 2, get your own damn planter. You heard the man. Okay, yeah. we've got okay. that. We've got this. What am I even doing, Michael? I don't even know. Jason New. Murphy says, you could have mixed some, of some mini puffs and been done. I've never pressed these at the Jason, same time. Are we ready? I, and I know. Oh, why did I it work? know. Freeze. Dang it. Oh, well. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new 3D camera. Oh, we got two minutes, right? Yeah, okay, two minutes. I'll, my rotor okay, brush is camera. I'll, put, I'll try to line it up in the room. Uh, yep, it lines up just right there. Perfect. And uh, let's add a couple of keyframes here. Do, 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 do. There's a keyframe there. Keyframe for you. Keyframe for you. Keyframe for you. I am nailing this now. I we've we've so got this. We've so got it that you don't even need to worry about it. Uh, rotate that one out a little bit. Look at that flawless manual tracking. Flawless. Uh, Justin Leduc says Rotobrush thinks Seth is a pothead, uh, and Mike Gaines says sixty frames per second for the win, Seth. Oh God, seriously, I, why did I do that? Should have checked it first. But we re we really do need to see Hashi's screen so people can appreciate what he's doing, Seth. We've seen oh, enough God. of Hashi's screen this episode, okay? And we're gonna watch this whole thing freeze. No, I'm kidding. We do need to see Hashi. But Hashi's uh, okay. Is I'm I'm adding a uh, done, some fractal noise to it's a done. solid. Uh, with some high contrast, uh, just chill. smaller scale. You got a minute left. Just hang out and chill. Minute. I know. I I I I feel like I could do something. Maybe I'll I'll add a I'll add some. Oh, you're making your really noise from scratch. See, I I feel like to to add and then I'm some realism. Bring in some. And now I'll VHS it. I'm gonna for some realism. I'm gonna grab some. Stock. Let's choose, uh, a, choose a static. preset. Choose a preset. What do we got? I want extreme. Uh, oh, I forgot about. <laughs> I forgot about plank tape. Gall darn it. Okay. You're right. I'm. I, you're right, and I was wrong. And but what I can do now is I'm going to add uh, one of my favorite uh, things, which is. Uh, oh my gosh, what is it called? Um. No, I. Is it called? You got ten seconds left. Oh no! CC flow motion. CC flow motion. I'm going to do that right there. Five, four, I'm going to keyframe. E Guys, I got bad news for you. I'm just going to keep working on the shot because I really want to. I want to do it. I've got it. I'm. I'm done. Check it out. No. Static <laughs> TV. I don't know where I'm looking and why I'm sitting so close to the TV. But then suddenly, here we go. And yeah, CC flow motion. Wow. You did it, Hush. Hey, you know what? There you go. 20 minutes. That's close enough for 20 minutes. That's good. That's close enough. You would know what shot I was talking about in theory. Oh, oh. my gosh. We, that was interesting. Now, what would have happened if I had been able to bring in my, uh, my weird uh, like, uh, like Christmas play costume of my hand here. Okay, I'll grab. I know I'll freeze this frame. Uh, one of my time freeze frame, and then uh, on this frame we'll we'll roto brush just the individual frame. Ba 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 There we go. There we go. Uh, and now that that's there, uh, pre-compose that with everything, move all the things over there, 
and freeze this frame because I don't know if it's going to try to what it's going to try to do. Freeze frame. There we go. We'll do. Yeah, here's what we would have had if uh, if I had the amazing time. I would have done some amazing animation here. Oh yes. Oh, you know what? This could be 3D. This could be 3D. <laughs> And it could be coming out of the television <laughs> like this. Where is where's my black solid? It should be interacting with my black solid. Yes. Oh my god, here we go. This is so exciting. Oh wait, no, I'm but it can't, well, this is fun. Nuts. It won't go in if I do this, it won't go in front of me though. Unless out of curiosity, can I tell my Hashi with flow motion? to uh, have a track mat of this hand inverted. You can. And keep it visible. Yes. <laughs> I'm using a 3D layer as a track mat for this layer, and it's preserving the transformed 3D layer as the mat. It's not using the flattened out to everything mat. Everybody. Wait, what? Say it again. I'm using. Okay, wait. Never mind. That would have happened before, right? Yes, but the three D layer. But and the three D layer needs to be below me, like because it want it needs to interact with this TV plane. Okay, so that's unusual. Uh, so I would need to be in front of it to be in front of this TV. It's a three D layer. I'm a two D layer, but I really want this hand, and I'll label it hand to be also in front of me, which doesn't make sense because it, it breaks the way that After Effects was thinking about this before. But now if I tell the Hashi layer, which is way up here above everything, to use the 3D hand as an inverted alpha mat, it punches it out wherever the hand is. So now this is interacting with two levels of depth which is fantastic thank you adobe engineering team that is dope so many extra things like this that you just you couldn't do and it was frustrating that we couldn't do because of like weird uh weird issues like this because i would often find myself in a situation where i wanted to be able to tell something just ignore this one layer please and use yourself as the uh you know the as a track mat or an alpha mat and now by golly they've done it they've really done it they like us they really like us okay check it out okay stupid but now uh, check it out like so the 3d layer comes out from this plane goes in front of my 2D layer and then can be transformed and pulled back and it preserves its interaction with the 3D with the 3D card and is perfectly matting me out. That is cool. So so cool. So really all you need now is like shine or something on the edges of your hands to make them feel like they're interacting with the TV screen. And you're like good to go, really. It, like, it, that's it. I would also make I'm going to throw the day for night uh, looks filter on here and see what that looks like. <laughs> Custom looks. So this is magic bullet looks, which is a really quick and easy way to shop through a handful of looks for your film. I'm going to choose the day for night effect and move the vignette over to where the TV is. Maybe scale and customize it a little bit like the, like so. Uh, and I'll say, okay. And now, yeah, so now we got a slightly more, you know, ring. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, look at that. And then, you know, on the same thing, I could add, like, I don't know, like Misfire or something like that. Or exporting a GIF. Well, maybe not with all the... Uh, I just want that, that vignette yuckiness there are better ways to do this <laughs> okay i'm gonna call this as done as i as i'm gonna do 
Seth, how are you doing over there? Mine, so mine uh, got a little tricky. I go a little too high. Uh, my back goes a little too high right there, but I could probably puppet that or something, distort that down. But then the legs and feet like are in pretty good shape to be able to climb in. <laughs> So, that is amazing. I think with a little extra time and stuff, I mean, it's 157. We can't do it today on the show, but I think I might just might try to finish this by next week. Just, well, I mean, real I quick, how, how could I distort my back just in that moment? Uh, just keyframe mesh warp or liquefy or basically warp. Liquefy. Thank you very much. Or make the TV bigger. You know, I don't want to make the TV bigger. Let me liquefy. He doesn't want to, chat. So let's see if I go. It, the, this was amazing. I Great efforts all around. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for uh, playing VFX and Kill. Or uh, what was our other name for it? We had some. Thrill. VFX, VFX and Thrill. Thrill. VFX and Thrill. Well, I'm like. Thinning myself up here. This was well, this is amazing. Uh, not- <laughs> <laughs> this maybe isn't the best thing to end the show on, or the, it is. You, you Kardashianing yourself? Yeah. Great way to. It's it's a verb. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's great right there. Here we go. Wow, wow, and now and now make that twerk, you and to, we've satisfied to, several. Uh, got him. Trust it. Oh man, man. I didn't think about it, but I could add a uh, hollow matrix to the to the hand coming out of the TV. Hollow matrix. Hollow matrix. Hollow man. Hollow matrix. Oh yeah, hollow matrix would be perfect for that. DJ, instead of making the TV bigger, uh, he's making his butt bigger, so it's fine. Smaller. Well, you're right. It's my waistline. The chat is very much enjoying, enjoying your body, uh, morphia. body morphia. Yeah, me too. I think, it's, I think it's important. Wow. Wow. That's just maybe my final. Whoever wanted the twerking, there you go. You know what? That was Darby. Congratulations, Darb. I'm going to see him tonight, actually. Say hi. I will say hi to Darby. Awesome. Darby, you rock. I don't want to go. This has been too doing fun. Whatever's. All right. Oh, oh man. Hashi, okay, so... the Holo Matrix, he switched to Hashi screen. The Holo Matrix looks really good on that. All right. I might even switch back to the, like the default uh, Holo Matrix nice. was doing some stuff that I really liked too. I'm just going to reset it real quick, um, and uh, and turn down my glow a bit. But like, look at this craziness. Like that's some that's disturbing. I, I wouldn't wish that upon most people. Let's see amount. Oops. Let's turn the amount down and the size up a little bit. Okay, I've got to find the right level of glow from optical glow here, because I want I want to add some some cool optical glow to this hand, and I want it to unmult. Though I'm 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 split on it because without unmulting it, bizarrely, it looks like like cast shadows on me wherever it's like in contact, or like the face and stuff. Like it's adding some shadowy stuff. And uh, obviously, in Hollow Matrix, I could uh, dive into the actual uh, tinting effects and uncheck. Uh, oh wait, no, where is it? Uh, there, you can literally adjust everything in here. So uh, that's I don't remember what I'm doing. Uh, uh, I had Hosh, a, 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 a thing that I'm I try to do all the time, and I remember how, I have to relearn how every time and forget. How how would you do the like glowing edges that are going to happen like uh, against the TV? Like how would you do an organic version of that? 
Um, I would probably try to create some kind of overlap mask uh, that is a like a literal result of the two layers overlapping each other somewhere, like say the edge of this uh, hand or something like that. Oh, man, I had I had I feel like I had a good thing and I I just I've ruined it. What did, what were the settings before? Was it was it just when it was just Hollow Matrix that the default settings looked the best? Maybe uh, that's. You had tweaked a couple of things and looked really good. I forget what it was, though. Uh, okay, we'll undo hike while I while I talk. Um, I would look for. I often like to find something like if you're looking at this hand coming out of the TV, like you want this spot to be where the interaction is happening, and so you would try to figure out if, like what could I do that would be uh, in give me an alpha result that is this bit a little bit bloated or this plane brought a little bit forward and that'll generate this really ugly shape here and then once you do that you can add a multi-instance uh, mat choker that bloats it out and softens its edges until you get a big slug here and once you have a big slug there if you add something like rough and edges to it you can start to add some organic distortion and displacement to it that might actually look pretty cool. So that's what I would do. But remind me, I, I, I wasn't with the source all the way over there. I wasn't light. fully listening. How, how would you restrict it only to that part of your arm? Like to that edge? Oh, I would make a duplicate of the arm and put a feathered mask there or something oh, okay. like that. Uh, you can watch my matrix uh, mirror uh, video, which I think oh, yeah. uh, right might deal with that somewhat. I don't remember for sure, but I feel like I would have tried to to encompass that in there. Oh man, I lost it. I lost it. This this is the we're just sinking the ship together here, Zeth. But I am very happy that we we went through and we got these uh, bizarre, crazy uh, effects uh, pulled out in in a relatively short amount of time. We got through six different uh, unique effects in. Uh, the two hours we had with you. And we always love to have you here on VFX and Chill. Uh, we are returning for one last spooky episode next week uh, on Friday, same time, same VFX channel. And uh, if, you're, if you're missing visual effect, uh, you know, like comfort in the meantime, please check out the Maxon training team who is teaching a lot of amazing, awesome stuff all week long, like literally every day of the week. We have different training for all sorts of things. Uh, ZBrush, uh, Cinema 4D, Redshift, anything that you're interested in uh, uh, learning more about, uh, it's all available and all have some live show dedicated to them if you want to go and ask your specific questions. The trainers are amazing and make themselves accessible to you for those reasons. And uh, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my spiel about it. That's it. That's it, everybody. Happy Halloween! Uh, uh, getting your decorations set up and all of the fun stuff like that. I'm excited to maybe show you all the results of any Halloween decorations that I'm able to do this week once I get back to La Canada, not to be confused with La Canada. Uh, and uh, anyway, everybody, thank you for VFX and chilling with us. Yeah, everybody. Bye.